All right, and welcome back. So today we are going to be continuing our conversation on chapter three by talking about section 3.2, which is properties of parallel lines. Please be aware this is a two-parter. This is all going to be in one video, though, but you're going to have multiple pages on your guide and notes. So please have out your guide and notes. Let's begin. So by the end of this video, we're going to be able to state and apply postulates and theorems about parallel lines. So just be aware from now on, arrowheads will be used to indicate pairs of parallel lines as in the following diagrams. So if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the corresponding angles are going to be congruent. So on the right hand side, we have our diagram. A is parallel to B and C is going to be our transversal. So one and two are corresponding angles, which means they're now going to be congruent. Regarding the arrowheads, you're going to see we have an arrow on A and an arrow on B. That's going to tell us saying, hey, lines A and B are parallel. Also with corresponding angles, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then alternate interior angles are going to be congruent. So again, if we're given that A is parallel to B, then angles two and angle three are going to be congruent. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the same side interior angles are supplementary. That means if we have line A is parallel to line B, angles three and four are supplementary. They're gonna add up to 180 degrees. And lastly, if a transversal is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, then it is perpendicular to the other one also. So if we know that lines J and K are parallel, and our transversal line L is perpendicular to line J, then that means that our transversal L also has to be perpendicular to L, or also perpendicular to K, pardon me. So again, if a transversal is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, then it's perpendicular to the other one also. If we're given that J is parallel with K, and line L is perpendicular to J, then line L is also going to be perpendicular to K. Awesome, with this in mind, please work on problems one through 11 on the guide and notes and resume when you're ready to move forward. So we have another example for you. If we're given this diagram, we know the measure of angle one is 120 degrees. We wanna find the measures of angle two, three, and four. Please be aware of our arrowheads, meaning that we have one arrowhead and one arrowhead on those lines, meaning that those two lines are gonna be parallel. We have two arrowheads and two arrowheads mean that those two lines are going to be parallel. So it's going to help us out here. So for A, we know that the measure of angle two is equal to the measure of angle one, which is going to be 120 degrees. Because if two lines are cut by a transversal, then the alternate interior angles are going to be congruent. For angle one, or say for B, we know angle one and angle three are same side interior angles. So the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle three is equal to 180 degrees because if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the same side interior angles are supplementary. So we do 120 plus the measure of angle three is equal to 180. So the measure of angle three is going to be 60. And lastly for C, we know that angle four is gonna be congruent to angle two because, two because if two lines are cut by a transversal then the corresponding angles are going to be congruent. And we know that angle two is congruent to angle one. So angle four is going to be congruent to angle one. And we know that measure of angle four is going to be 120. Awesome. With that in mind, please work on problems 12 through 19 on the guide notes and turn it over to part two when you're ready to move on. So now we're going to be talking about part two. This is a separate sheet in your guided notes. Again, properties of parallel lines, part two. So if two lines are parallel and they're cut by a transversal, then corresponding angles are congruent, alternate interior angles are congruent, and same side interior angles are supplementary. If a transversal is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, then it is perpendicular to the other one also. Let's go through an example. So example one tells us to find the values of X and Y, and we're given two separate diagrams. So we're gonna treat it separately here. Let's talk about A. So we know that 3x is equal to 105 because we have corresponding angles being congruent. So x is going to be 35. 3x is corresponding to 105. Again, corresponding angles are congruent. Well, now we know that we're going to have 5y plus 105 is equal to 180. 
because if two lines are cut by a transversal, then the same side interior angles are supplementary. So 5y plus 105 gives us 180. Now you also could do 3x plus 5y equals 180, and then substitute in the value of x to then find 3x to then go and use 5y. But it's a little bit simpler when we do 5y plus 105 to be 180. And we get that y is going to be 15. For part b, we know we have 120 is equal to x plus x, because if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the alternate interior angles are going to be congruent. You have 120 is equal to 2x, so therefore 60 is going to be equal to x. And then we'll have to find y, so we know x plus y is going to be equal to 180, because if two lines are cut by a transversal, same side interior angles are going to be supplementary. So we know that x is 60, so 60 plus y is equal to 180. Therefore, we get y is equal to 120. Beautiful. With that in mind, please work on problems 1 through 6 on the guide and notes and resume when you're ready to move forward. In our last example, we're given this diagram. We're asked to find the values of x, y, and z. So given this diagram, we have a parallelogram. We have two opposite sides are parallel. Top and bottom are parallel, left and right are parallel, and we have a transversal cutting in through. So we know that 4x is going to be equal to 52, because if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the alternate interior angles are going to be congruent. So 4x is congruent to 52. Therefore, we get that x is going to be equal to 13. So that's one part of it done. Let's use that value to help us out to get y and z. So we're going to have 3y plus 8 is going to be equal to 32, again, because we have alternate interior angles. 3y plus 8 is an alternate interior angle for 32. So we solve for y, and we get that y is going to be equal to 8. And now is where we have two different ways to go about finding z. So let's look at the one on the left-hand side first. So we have 32 plus 4x plus z is equal to 180 degrees. We then substitute in our value of x, and we find that z is going to be 96. We also can use 52 plus 3y plus 8 plus z is going to be equal to 180. We substitute in the value of y, then we find that z is 96. Because we have, if two lines, or two parallel lines, I should say, are cut by transversal, then the same side and tier angles are going to be supplementary. So there's a couple of different ways to go about it, but either of those are going to be sufficient for us. Great job, kiddos. With this in mind, please work on problems 7 through 11 on the guide and notes. Keep making yourself proud. Make sure you're doing your best. Let us know if you have any questions. We'll talk to you soon.